Hi folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery. Today I'm going to be sharing four different flowers and they are all very, very fast. They're perfect for fall. Let's jump into our supplies. I'm gonna be using some very traditional fall colored quilling paper strips. I'll go over those in detail as they come up. These are all gonna be 1 8 inch wide strips, various lengths. We'll talk about that as it happens. I'm gonna be using a slotted tool for all of these. You can use a needle tool if you want to. If you want to grab a uh, automatic quilling tool, you can use that too. Tweezers may come in handy when you're putting these flowers together. For glue, I'm just using Elmer's Glue All in my needle nose bottle. I am gonna be using a cork board with some wax paper on top and some pins to put some of these flowers together. And you might wanna grab a ruler if you wanna be super exact. And as always, I do have a little damp towel next to me to wipe off my gluey fingers. So we're gonna get started with the largest of these flowers. They're still sort of small, but they're the biggest ones that we're doing today. I have ivory strips here. This is from uh, Craft Harbor. So they are about 24 inches long or so. And I'm going to be tearing these right in half. And each of these halves is going to make one flower petal. So each petal is about 12 inches or so in length. And all I'm going to do is roll it up with my slotted tool from start to finish. Now that'll just take a few seconds here. Like I said, if you're more comfortable with a needle tool or the automatic quilling tool, we'll just zip these right up in no time. You can use whatever tool you like. We're taking this off the tool and we're gonna open it up just slightly, just for one quick second. Boop just like that. We still want a mostly tight coil, but we wanna be able to mold this a little bit. And if you ever tried to mold tight coils, it will start to hurt your fingers pretty quickly. If you just give a little bit of room right in the center, you can mold them a little bit easier and don't hurt your fingers as much. We're looking for a nice marquee shape where so you pinch it on both sides and then flatten it a little bit in the center. And then we're gonna gently dome it from the underneath just a little bit. Apply some glue. This is gonna be the underside, so we're applying it to the underside. And you would brush that out to be smooth. I couldn't find my little paintbrush at the moment, so I'm just using my finger. And that is one of your flower petals, very slightly domed from the underneath. You're going to want to make five more, so we have six all together. And for the center of this flower, I just have a little deep yellow strip, about four inches, that I rolled up to a tight coil, domed a little bit as well. I'm going to put a pin right through the center of that to keep it in place. And then it's just a matter of gluing each of these petals to the outside. Like I said, these are fast flowers. These are flowers to have in your toolbox to add a little bit of texture to your quilling designs. You can make a whole bunch of them as a focus. You can add more than one to your designs. These come together super duper quickly, but they're just a different way of having different types of flowers. So to make these as even as I can, I'm just going opposite sides as I put them in. And I'm still using my Elmer's glue here. If you wanted to use tacky glue, you can. It will definitely help them stick a little bit faster. But with the Elmer's, I have a little bit more time to adjust as needed and get them however I like. They don't have to be perfect. It's nature. Nature is not generally perfect. That's it. That is our first fast fall flower. Let that dry and you can take it off your board and it's got a little bit of three dimensionality to it. It's not super flat because we domed those petals. There you go, you can see just very slightly. Got a little bit of shape to it, a little bit of structure. Nothing too fancy. And let's move on to the next one. 
Now I have a color called Crimson. This is from Quilled Creations. And I'm tearing off six inches. It's a nice deep red color. It's one of my favorite reds. Very similar to the last flower. We're gonna roll this one again all the way start to finish. And we're gonna take this one off the tool as well, very carefully, letting it open just a tiny amount, even less than last time, just, just a hair. And glue that end down to secure. And we're going to, like I said, mold this in a similar way as the last one. Instead of pinching both sides, we're just gonna pinch one side. If you ever can't get your, your quilling, um, coils to stay closed, if you kind of burnish it with the side of a tool, that will help it seal. That's what I just did there. So I pinched this side. We're leaving the other side unpinched. And I'm using the end of a paintbrush here because this is so small I can't get my finger in to dome it. Just gently pushing the inside out. And now we have sort of a concave little flower petal. The underneath side this time is going to be the domed side, the side that's pushed out. So I'm brushing some glue on that side. Found my paintbrush now. Brushing my glue to the underside here. And I'm going to let that dry so that that shape stays. And for this flower, we're going to be using five, there we go, five of these petals. And then we'll put them all together. These flowers don't have a center. They're just very tiny little accent flowers. And we're going to be putting them together, like flipping that last flower on its head, literally. So the domed part is gonna be down. The open cup is going to be facing up. I have found if you put a pin right through one of them, it keeps everybody stable. And then you can just start gluing them together. Again, if you wanna use tacky glue, you can. It will make it a little bit more secure, a little bit more quickly, but the Elmer's glue works just fine. And these are so tiny that having a, uh, a pair of tweezers does help put them together. And I, I do wanna mention with any of these flowers, you can change the colors. They don't have to be the same colors that I'm using. You can make these for spring, you can make these for summer. These just happen to be what I'm using for fall, because fall's coming up right around the corner. These would look cute with just four petals as well if you wanted to stop there. But let's put that fifth one in. Since we already did all the work, just as needed. But like you can see, if you wanted to put a pin in every petal of these as they dried, you can. But the one just keeps everything in place and you can still adjust if you need to. Let's let all those dry. And I have some more over here that are done. You can make these different sizes. A small one there is made with four inch strips and the bigger ones are made with the six inch like I just did for the demo. And here is our first flower where the, the dome is on the underneath side and then the red ones, the dome part is on top. So you can see the difference. They do look like totally different flowers even though they were made almost exactly the same way. Next we have what I'm going to call our goldenrod flower. I apologize in advance for anyone who has that fear of things with holes in them. This might not be for you, so if you want to fast forward a few minutes, that is recommended. Uh, so this is a four inch piece of deep yellow paper from Cold Creations. Rolled it again all the way start to finish. And this time I'm going to keep it on my quilling tool. I don't need this to open up at all. Pop it right off your tool. And because it's so small, again, I'm using the bottom of a paintbrush to very gently dome the underneath very, very slightly. I just want a little bit of a three-dimensional quality to this one. Add some glue to the side we're not going to see, which is this part down here. And brush it to make it smooth. Let that dry. For each of these little goldenrod flowers, we're going to need about 12 to 15 of these little domed pieces. 
And then it's just a matter of putting this together. We're just sort of free, freely stacking them more or less. I start with one, I add another one, maybe a layer of three underneath. I don't want it to look super perfect up and down like a little, a little stack. I want it to be sort of casually placed in there. And it requires a little bit of of finagling. You'll see me kind of mess with it a little bit till I get it the way I want. But there's no right or wrong to this. Like I said before, nature isn't perfect. Just get them together and make sure everybody's touching another one and that there's a little bit of glue in between and it should turn out just fine. At this point, I am more or less happy with the shape of my goldenrod, so I'm gonna make my little stems. I'm gonna be using leaf green, which is a green from Craft Harbor. And I have about eight or 10 inches here. I'm gonna be making these into double thick strips and that'll make them nice and sturdy for my stems. So I didn't measure this because I'm not gonna be using this whole strip for each one. Fold it in half, however long it is, and add some glue all the way a small line from the middle where you folded it to one of the ends. And then we're just gonna run our fingers through in all directions like a little zipper. Zip it on through. If you followed me for any length of time, you've seen me do this a hundred times. I will leave a link to a video where I explain this in a little bit more detail and why I do this, but it's a nice way to get thicker, sturdier strips without having to invest in many different types of weights of paper. So I'll let that dry and you'll have a really nice sturdy quilling paper strip that you can use for things like stems. Just tore off about an inch and a half or so because these flowers aren't super big and I like to curve it a little bit to make it look a little bit more natural. A little bit of glue on the bottom of my goldenrod. Stick that in to let it dry. It's all there is to that flower. I have some more here that have already dried. And you can see they're not all exactly the same shape because again, not all nature is the same. If you wanted to do them the opposite way as well for a little bit different texture, that would also work similar to the red flower. There you go, you could make these more of a, a light purple shade if you wanted to make lavender as well. Very similar process. So last but not least is actually my favorite flower of the bunch. They're gonna be little blooms. They are made with a paper called pumpkin from Quilled Creations and I have six inch strips. Going to roll these end to end, but then let them open up naturally in your hand. All the way down, there we go. some reason this pumpkin paper wanted to go crooked on me but got that all straightened off now so let it off the tool and just let it open up in your hands about all the way that it likes to go there we go a little bit of glue on the end and we're gonna pinch this into a teardrop which again is just by pinching one side. I like to aim my pinches towards the the point where my paper, uh, the end is where I just sealed it. It just kind of hides that little crease so you never see it. If you don't do that, that's fine too. That's just my habit. For each of these flowers, we're going to be using three teardrops of the same size and we're just going to glue them together very easily. You don't need to pinch them with pins. If you want to, you can, but we're just going for a very gentle little stack like so. 
And while that dries, we're going to be taking some of our leaf green paper again. I have about 10 inches here, and we're gonna roll this up into a tight coil to make sort of a little cup for our flower blossom to be blooming from. So with our slotted tool again, all the way to the end. Roll that, keep rolling, there we go. And don't let that open up. You can glue it right on your tool. Get that all together. Okay, and then we can pop that off. And we're going to, using something small, again, this is kind of a small piece, so I can't get my finger in there. Gently push the center out. You don't need this one to be a dome, so you want it to be pushed out a little bit further, almost like a cone shape. Add a little bit of glue to the inside so that we don't lose that cone. Use your brush here to make that all smooth. Make sure it hits every piece on the inside. And, and at this point, what we're gonna do is something a little bit different. We're gonna smush it, not all the way closed. Just wanna make it a little bit of a, kind of a flat oval. Add some glue to the edge on the inside. And then we're just going to place our little flower blossom right inside that little cup. Just like that. So it looks like the petals are blooming right out. Add a little stem, just like we did before. We have more of that double thick strip left over. So I'm gonna tear off another couple of inches a little bit of glue on the bottom of our little flower bud and then attach our stem. Because our flower blossom little cup has a little bit more height to it, you might find it hard to get your stem to glue evenly and not go crooked. You can use a couple of pins just to keep it straight or if you wanna use tacky glue to make this dry a little bit faster, you can do that as well. That will help everything stay nice and in line together. Here are a few that I already, already have dried. Um, the bigger ones are made with six inch strips and the smaller one there is four inches. Just like anything else, you can change the colors on these and make them more seasonal for the project you're doing. I like this pumpkin color. I think it's, it's different. They almost look like um, we have the mums in our front yard that are very similar to this color. That's what they remind me of, are the mums that are blooming, but it's nice to have sort of a profile flower just because it gives it a different look to your piece. Now the point of this project is that you can add these to your other favorite flowers, but if you're just looking for something from what we made today, add some more greenery, put this all together, you can make a really pretty fall um, project just with the flowers we made today. You can stop right there. That looks kind of cool already. Another little flower, or I'm sorry, another little leaf. I like to just kind of stack the flower buds on top of everything because it kind of can cover where everything meets. But just play around with it. You know, I'm not even gluing anything here. I'm just kind of messing with it, giving everything some height, and everything already has different textures and different colors. Put this together however you like. Add your own favorite flowers. That looks pretty there with a little bit of white. The yellow ties in with the goldenrod. Very cute. Maybe add just a little bit of splash of those reds. Little tiny flowers here and there. I love this, so pretty. You could make this on a card, you can put this on a piece of mat board and frame it. Anything you think will work with these flowers. These are good, like I said, to have in your toolbox, different types of flowers, different textures, different colors. Add them oh, to whatever you want. There's a whole nother little spray of flowers. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments. I will answer them as soon as I can. I will add links to 
all the supplies that I used in the description box for this video. Any other videos you might want to watch, I'll put down there as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on my next video. In the meantime, enjoy making your fall quilling projects and I will see you next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.